Hi, I'm Dr. Emily Park. In my Functional Health Minute today, I'd like to further expand on the previous video on cholesterol. <clears throat> so there are some genetics behind cholesterol metabolism. There is a very well-known gene called the APO gene. So this is the APOE gene that I'm speaking of. And APO is short for apolipoprotein. And um, most of us are an APOE33, meaning we have two copies of the APOE3 gene, meaning we are the wild type or the most common type and have the average risk for cardiovascular disease. So people that have a one copy of APOE2 um, may have lower cholesterol levels, but higher triglyceride levels. We know for sure that people that have two copies of APOE2, so if you're a 2-2, then they usually do have low cholesterol levels, but higher triglyceride levels, and they are at increased cardiovascular disease risk. You can also have one or two copies of APOE4. So we do know that if you have one or two copies of APOE4, that you are at increased risk for cardiovascular disease, as well as increased risk for Alzheimer's. As far as the cardiovascular disease risk goes, we do know that um, people that have a copy of APOE4, there is some data to suggest that lowering saturated fat in the diet may actually help lower cholesterol. They're the only uh, gene type that has been proven <clears throat> that lowering saturated fat has been proven to help. So there is a gene that you can get tested for because there is some genetics behind um, cholesterol metabolism. And knowing your gene type means that you're gonna be able to intervene a little bit more effectively with your environment. So that's the field of epigenetics, meaning what you do in your environment can flip on or flip off or influence you know, the genes that you do have. So for example, just because you have one copy of APOE4 doesn't mean that you are going to get Alzheimer's and that you're gonna have cardiovascular disease risk. It just means you are genetically predisposed and have to kind of work a little bit harder to prevent that. So to me, that in functional medicine, that means, okay, if you have a copy of an APOE4, we are gonna work very, very hard to make sure we get your cholesterol levels under control, control your blood sugar, make sure that your nutrients are very well tightly controlled, make sure your hormones are in a good balance, making sure that you don't have toxins or chronic infections. We're going to do absolutely everything we can. We will probably monitor you even a little bit more closely than someone who doesn't have an APOE4 gene, for example. So that's the genetic part. And there are other you know, genetic cardiovascular disease um, genes. Uh, we don't know all of them as of yet. And we do know that there's genetics behind certain things, but um, we don't have a, a gene sequenced out for absolutely everything yet. But some things definitely tend to run in families. Um, some patients have HDL um, that is higher than normal and you know, that runs in their family. And others have you know, just high cholesterol that runs in their family, but they don't have, you know, there's still an APOE33. And, and so it can vary quite a bit. So now I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the advanced markers. So earlier um, in, the, in the previous video, I actually showed you this. <clears throat> so I'd like to expand on this a little bit more. Um, and, and these are tests that we can um, fortunately now get done at um, Sonora Quest here locally or via Quest Diagnostics because um, Cleveland Heart Labs and, and them um, actually mer uh, merged Quest bought them. So we can get a lot of their advanced um, tests right through Quest Diagnostics, which is great. Um, so the, these over here, these two markers over here, F2 isoprostane and oxidative LDL, they are um, considered you know, risk for disease. So if F2 isoprostane is elevated, what that means is there's been some oxidation in the endothelium. So meaning there's been some you know, damage, oxidation, think of it kind of like, a, almost like a, a rust. And endothelium means the inside lining of the blood vessel. So there's been some you know, damage um, to the inside lining of the blood vessel. And oxidative LDL means that it, you know, LDL cholesterol is, is um, you know, the low dense lipoprotein cholesterol. Um, and oxidated, the oxidated form of it, it, it means that it has been damaged. So what does that mean? What's the significance there? <clears throat> It means that that type of cholesterol is way more likely to lay down plaques um, and, cre and create um, a problem down the line. Next um, are these markers here that indicate the presence of disease. So ADMA, um, it actually indicates that the lining of the blood vessels, the endothelium, have, are starting to become unhealthy. And if ADMA is elevated, it is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Um, other 
parts of the body that have issues with blood vessels can have an elevation in ADMA as well. Like for example, kidney disease is another one you look at when ADMA is elevated. And then of course the microalbumin. Um, microalbumin is another marker that tells us the health of the endothelium, the inside lining of the blood vessels. And so if you are spilling some small amount of albumin into your urine, that is an indicator that your endothelium, the lining of the blood vessels, you know, are not doing well. And then of course there's the CRP, C-reactive protein, and we do the high sensitivity C-reactive protein. Um, and C-reactive protein is an overall marker for inflammation. It is nonspecific, so it doesn't necessarily mean that you are laying down plaques, although it certainly can. Um, CRP responds to um, all kinds of other acute inflammations. You know, for example, even if you had a little bit of a cold or a virus or you had a, an acute injury, um, CRP is also going to respond to that. But it can actually elevate from, you know, a, a <clears throat> lipid disruption and, of course, from high blood sugars, other forms of inflammation as well. And then over here, we've got, you know, disease activity. So this is where we definitely have plaque buildup and maybe even some plaque disruption. So <clears throat> LP little a for sure means that there has been some cholesterol buildup. So uh, when that's elevated, um, that's usually the answer. There are a couple of other minor reasons why um, LP, PLA2, you know, might be elevated. But for the most part, it does indicate there's been some cholesterol buildup somewhere. Um, and then um, MPO or myeloperoxidase. Myeloperoxidase um, indicates that the inside lining of the blood vessel wall, the endothelium, has actually been damaged and is thin and cracked. So that means it's at, that inside lining of the blood vessel wall is at very high risk for you know cholesterol, um, you know uh, depositing and even you know cholesterol uh, plaques rupturing. So I hope that helps expand further on this inflammation here. There are a couple of other advanced markers that can be useful. Um, looking at ApoB and ApoA1 can also be helpful. Um, ApoB, if ApoB is elevated, um, it can actually be an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease as well. Um, ApoB is um, found on the surface of LDL cholesterol, of um, IDL, meaning intermediate dense lipoprotein, VLDL, so very low dense lipoprotein, and it's also found on lipoprotein A as well. And we know if that's elevated, that can be an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Um, ApoA1, um, if ApoA1 is low, um, it usually means that um, you're, you have lower levels of HDL, your good cholesterol, and that you are, um, not only that, but that you are um, not usually clearing out cholesterol as effectively or as fast as normal. So that can, of course, be an increased risk for cardiovascular disease as well. And then lipoprotein little a, LP little a as we call it, um, it is also an independent risk factor for cardiovascular disease. That, that one, there's definitely some genetics behind it. And um, there are some, some treatments that can help lower it, although I personally have seen them work intermittently. Um, there are some supplements that might help, um, like niacin, for example, can help some people. I have not seen it help everyone. Um, even statin medications, um, I have patients that come to me and they're already on statin medications uh, for long-standing cardiovascular disease and um, you know, their LP little A's are elevated, so not even statins lower LP little A all the time. Um, so LP little A, um, is a uh, apolipoprotein A, so a, an apolipoprotein that's attached to an LDL cholesterol molecule. And like I said, that one, you know, has some pretty strong, you know, genetics behind it. And, um, and I have seen uh, many patients come through with elevated LP little A's and, you know, we do clean up their diet and we clean up their lifestyle. And, and you know, sometimes we'll, we'll um, play around with different supplements and test their labs to see if it helps or not. Um, but I haven't seen anything, any one thing consistently, you know, lower LP little A to date. So um, these are some advanced cholesterol markers that you can look at to really further stratify your risk of cardiovascular disease. I'm Dr. Emily Park with your Functional Health Minute for today.